What is up guys? Welcome back to another episode over here on Mustang Hunter Diecast. And we are going through and continuing through the jammers and also still in the realm of Nissan. And you guys commented that you weren't aware of how many Skylines there were out there. And there's a bunch from Matchbox to Hot Wheels, just to name those. There are so many. So we're going to be starting out with some old school ones, the 1970 2000 GT of the Skyline. Now this is the GTX and it's a very nice satin blue, almost a primer finish. And I love how they did this one right. They put the tail light tampos on there. You got the 1971 license plate, some real subtle and classic wheels to it. Of course, Matchbox really uses those a lot on their castings. But then coming around the front, check it out. You got some headlight and ambers for some detail. Very well done. And then of course it came out again in a silver metallic. And like I said in the last video, guys, this is not in any order or release order, just how I have them in the jammer. But this one is also well done in a nice silver metallic, same exact details. And they just did a really, really good job. When it comes down to Matchbox, I think sometimes Matchbox really outperforms Hot Wheels as far as mainline castings. Even though they're owned by Mattel, I still think they focus a lot more quality on, as far as Matchbox goes. But then this one comes along and it is a very vibrant hot pink with some uh, pretty crazy colors on there. You got purple, yellow, and blue dots kind of going down the side of it, almost in a matrix form. And then they got rid of the tampos. There's no tail lights, no headlights. You just have the fender markers right there that actually have some detail. But other than that, there's really nothing cool about this casting. Why do I have it? Because I have the other years and I wanted to complete at least a whole row on a jammer of the 1971s. But the cool thing about these guys, if you don't know, there are engine variations to this particular casting. And this one I had already drilled. I usually try to drill them to where I can snap them back together without any glue or anything holding it together. But I'll show this to you and let's go ahead and check it out. So here it is. That is the engine underneath the closed hood. I don't know if it was because it was a moving part at one point, um, but they kept the same interior underneath the body. So there's another engine variation that is a race setup with the racing seat, harness, and a turbo setup. Now I haven't been able to find it because I only bought the one. And then I decided, you know what, let me drill it and look for myself. And there you go. There's an engine underneath that body. So if you customizers out there want to use a jewelry blade and cut the hood off, you can totally do that with this one. And it'll be really cool because there are two variations to it. But it's not the best looking on the exterior, like the silver and blue, but it's still a beautiful skyline. Next up, we're going with the 2000 HT GTX. This one's from Hot Wheels. Of course, this is the iconic one that everyone was looking for as far as the Super. And yeah, that one is a beautiful one. But here you go. You have the mainline version, the JDM L right there on the fender with the nice hash stripes going down the sides. MC5s, not too bad of a wheel, but they could have thrown some at least tampos over the headlight covers because those covers look really tough on the card art if you do still have this one on card. Um, but I do love the single seat. There's no passenger seat to it. The details on the rear look nice. You have the GTR badge right there on the back. And then you have another one, which is the Walmart exclusive. This one came out in the camouflage livery, just like the Mustang and a bunch of other cars that came out from the Walmart exclusive. But you have this one lacking all the tampos really beautiful color you have the plain empty spot where the meatball would traditionally go for a race car but very clean as well and then we have another one this is a white version so it has the star on the hood black meatball and you still have the mc5s it's like a very common wheel when it comes to the ht 2000 gtx i just like to use those i think maybe some j5s would look good on it Maybe some lace wheels in black would have looked good, but it's still an awesome casting and of course an honorable mention. But the next ones 
are beyond my favorite. It's the KDR30. I'm definitely a huge fan of this one. It's the 82 Nissan Skyline R30 slash KDR30. You got the beautiful black OH5s with the copper ring tying in the RS Turbo. But look at the detail, guys. They actually did this one nicely because if they didn't, that back end would look kind of weird. So this is definitely one of my favorite Skylines. Def definitely the favorite year. Um, and I do like really finding all of these. I do have a good amount, but not every single one of them. But as you can see on this one, it also has headlights attached to the glass. So this one's just super clean. And then of course we got to follow up with another clean one. And this one is in blue metallic. Check that out. Same wheels, different lip color. You got them in chrome this time, same tampos, just a recolor. And it is looking really good. And then next up is another one. So here we go, we got two. There's no variations on this one. I haven't found anything that makes these different, but I do have them in the jammer together because having more than one, especially of a card that you just really, really like in case you want to wheel swap it just to see how it looks, it's always a good thing to do. So two beautiful blue KDR 30s. And of course, we got to follow up with the red one. This one is also a nice setup. Got the chrome, uh, gold chrome five spokes. Nicely detailed as well, beautiful red. But I think, I don't know. I don't know which one I like. I, I think the metallic blue looks really good. You have the window trim uh, going along the door. So I don't know if the other ones have that. I think that's the only one that has that actually. Um, yeah, that's the only one that has that silver trim going up over the door like that. So I don't know. If you guys have this one and it shows, let me know. Because I'm na now I'm curious. Because I never really paid attention to that. But beautiful red one. And then of course you got the one from Target. This was out of the Flying Customs in the beautiful heavy flake of blue metallic. And then you got the gold hot ones on there. With the gold uh, tampo stripe running down the side. These are just really cool. I love the square body era of JDMs. And of course like Fox bodies. They are just beautifully done. JDMs look really good in this era. So beautiful blue. And then of course, you got to follow up with the Zamac. Here we go. This one's fitted with the gold five spokes, raw metal finish, red and black stripe going down the side, clear lens, clear glass, of course, since it is attached. But another one, but this one actually has Greddy on the lower door where the other ones didn't. It just had the RS turbo. And then a recolor or actually painted version of the Zamac is the white. This one is super fresh. Very, very fresh looking casting. Love the red and black that really pops on top of the white. Um, but they just did this one really nice. They've kept the tampos on every single release. And of course, having the lenses on the front be plastic definitely takes away the worry of tampos. And then last for the KDR 30s, is the mystery model here we go this thing is gorgeous i do have two of these um yeah king nut sent me one of these this is just an awesome titanium color metallic you have the gray lace wheels and of course this was number two out of the mystery models i believe it was 2021 maybe 2022's mystery model but you have the eta 51 on the license plate not too sure what that represents but if you guys know comment down below and then after the KDR 30s, we're going to jump right back into everyone's favorite. It is the R34. Here we go. Nice black metallic PR5s in gold. And this one actually has tampos on the rear. Nice taillights. And then the, the plastic wing, and it's not casted with the body. So definitely separate. You'll see a tooling change later on as we get through the R34s where they took away the plastic wing and threw it into the casting itself. So I don't know exactly everything that changed about the tooling, but this is probably a, let's see, which year was this released? This is an F, so that would be eight, 2013, I think it is. Yeah, 2013, week number eight, so February of that year. And then next up is another beautiful Skyline, definitely one that everyone is a huge fan of, including myself. 
and it is the wide body version of the R33. Check that out. God, man, that thing is just beautiful. Love the Nissan livery on this one. Just race inspired wide body. Man, you cannot go wrong with that. It's just gorgeous. Beautifully done. And then of course you can't have this one without another wide body version. This one's in yellow. Here we go. Now, if only they threw some headlight details, I think it would look much better. But if you compare it, which one do you think looks better? I think the red washed out the rear tampos that it does have, whereas the yellow one complements it a little bit more, but I love the livery of the red one. It just looks so good, and I love the inlet for the headlight housing right there. Just sweet, man. These are both awesome skylines right there going back into the regular r34s you have the blue one blue metallic i think it's the same livery as the black i think it is let's see can you see it very similar almost the same striping but different but as you can see this one actually has the casted wing whereas the black metallic had the plastic wing this one has the metal so after the blue, you got to go with the iconic one, Brian's from Fast and the Furious, the legendary R34 right here in silver with the blue hash stripes running down the side. Such an iconic car, man. Anytime anyone sees this car, no matter who you are, you know exactly whose car this is, what movie it's from. It is just a quick identifier. And I think it's one of the things that makes this R34 so special is everyone knows what it is even those who just collect it just because they think it's a hype car to buy it's still a beautiful skyline i mean the r34 is definitely a fan favorite but i still like the kdr 30s just a little bit more you have this really nice green metallic it's almost like an avocado green but gray 10 spokes very nice color choice this was the main line of the super of course this one is just detailed very very nice and I do actually have two of them. One was sent in as a wheel swap. And once it comes around, you'll see. You guys let me know which one looks cleaner, the gray 10 spokes or the white. I think the white kind of complements it just a little bit, adding some contrast to it. Now the stripes on the white wheel version is actually off just a little bit. But other than that, it's still a super sweet car. Super sweet. Now getting off some R34s, we're gonna jump into some R32s, which is another heavy hitter. This is a mainline version of another Super that came out, and this one is in the charcoal metallic. Very, very nicely done. Tampos are on point. Wheel choice I think is great. It ties into the Skyline tampos that run along the door, but we don't get any headlight ones, which it's okay. It still looks beautiful. It's still an awesome car. Everyone knows what it is. But I still think this next one is even better. Here we go. Yokohama. Black PR5's beautiful blue metallic. Really captures the tampos on the taillights. And yeah, it's just one of the things that Hot Wheels does. And I've always said it. Their blue metallics are just beautiful. Just captures the light really well. And just complements the casting. But to go up from this to one-up it just a little bit. We're gonna go with the R33. Now this one is in a gorgeous, gorgeous purple metallic, man. Look at that. This is probably my favorite R33 in the collection just based off of the color. Of course, you do have the detailed rear end, but the color alone is what makes this casting my favorite. And you have headlight tampos, check it out. Even the GTR badge in the grill, they did this one right. And I think they did it again when they did a blue version of the R33. Check this one out. Gorgeous. Gorgeous casting. And, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of skylines out there, guys. And these are just a few of them. I know I have a good amount of variations and recolors and all of that. But that is just barely, barely scratching the surface. We're going to go ahead and jump onto the other side of the jammer. Let's showcase what's over there. All right, moving into the other side of the jammer. I think that was the first 25, 26 cars on the other side. This one is the 2000 GTR. Here we go in yellow. 
very clean love the yellow i mean it looks good on any car especially a jdm um, but you have some tail light tampos they managed to get those very tiny lenses on there and of course it's fitted with some steelies now of course this one's been out in multiple colors multiple releases um, i only have a few of them which we'll go over and of course the next one is this one in a beautiful charcoal it's not really a heavy metallic but it does have some flake into it but I love the fact that they threw some black lace wheels. Really gives it the JDM look that it needs, especially in this body style. You kind of see this on the older um, BMWs, you know, the E30s, E32s, all those. You would see some lace wheel or BBS style wheels. And I think it looks really good on this one. Um, and then, of course, it came out again in the blue and pink series for the 54th right here now this one is not my favorite but it still has to sit with the collection of skylines i have i'm just a huge skyline fan um, not because everyone does just because i love the body lines of it every year skyline to me just looks amazing now of course if you see it one in real life like the 1971 it probably wouldn't impress a lot of people but i appreciate the classics you gotta really stand back and appreciate what they were doing especially in the nissan world like this one so another awesome setup but of course you go a little bit cooler with the police livery in red here we go black steelies again back on this casting nice details for the taillights love the livery of course red and white looking super clean but there you go you have another 2000 gtr variation and then of course the last one for the skylines i know i have another jammer somewhere with some more skylines but we're going with the liberty walk version of the 2000 gtr and this one is in that very very bright soft baby blue but check it out they threw lenses on the headlights super clean liberty walk tampos on the windshield super small five spokes in black and i think that's what hurts this car is the wheel choice the rear end is completely washed out. They could have thrown some at least red dots on the tampos for tail lights, but they completely missed this one. So I think they could do better. The front end, everything from this view on looks great, but the wheels are wrong, way too small. And then of course the rear end is just washed out. So last one for the skylines, but we're sticking with some honorable mentions, of course. We're going with the custom Datsun 240Z in orange. Look at that, man. That thing is wicked clean. Tail lights, the rear end on this one is awesome. Love the fender flares. That thing is just freaking gorgeous. Beautiful one, man. The MC5s just fit this car. The lines, the casting, the tooling itself is beautiful. But there's another one, another awesome one to find. And it's from, I believe this is another Target exclusive. There we go. Beautiful turquoise. You got the number 72, yellow and orange stripes running down the hood and sides. And it's actually rocking the black basic wall wheels. There you go. Black walls. Hasn't been a long time, but they should really bring those back. Put those back on your casting. Get rid of some five spokes for a while and throw the black walls back on on the cars and i think it just looks cool just really really awesome one right here but then we're going to change it up we're going to go even crazier in color and this one is beautiful ruby red metallic with some gold pinstriping black hood black steelies this thing is sweet definitely an awesome one i don't know when i find cars like this I just have to have them. They're just beautiful and almost forgotten. A lot of people don't have this casting anymore. The Datsun 240Z has definitely fallen a wayside because of the R34 being super, super hot right now. But then you have this one as well as a blue. Check this one out. As soon as it comes around, your eyes will feast on some beautiful blue metallic. And instead of the gold striping they did on the red, they threw a light blue Maybe an off-white. We'll go ahead and take the red one off so you guys can focus on this beauty. Check it out. Got the Kaido deco on the doors for both. But just beautiful. Those fenders, man. That is a work of art. 
definitely a work of art. Now the next ones, these are a little different. These are the dots and 240Zs of the modern version, later version actually. So you went from the custom 240, now you're going to the 240Z. This is also another beautiful one. Love it. Just absolutely gorgeous. Got the J5s in gold, number 11. I don't know what it says on the side, but something racing. Of course, you have Datsun going across the hood. And then you have it again. This one's number 11. Then they came out with number 24 in another version. Check that out. Got Biozaki again. He was on yesterday's Jammer. I forgot which casting it was, but he was on the door of that other casting as well. Beautiful blue interior, gold and blue. Definitely didn't think that color setup would work, but it works on this one. And I'm definitely a fan of it. Now, of course, we have to throw in the mystery model of the 240. And here we go, satin finish. This thing is awesome, man. I don't know. This one and the Mustang Boss 302 that they came out with the same style livery. This thing just looks really good. Tan interior was the prime choice for this. Satin black with the red. Of course, you got J5s as well. Just awesome. And then, of course, you got to follow up with another classic wheel setup, the Y5s. Beautiful pearl white. Now, none of these have had tampos. All of these have, that you've seen so far of the 240s have absolutely no tampos, but they make up for it with the wheel choice and the livery and I think this one is another clean one as well but switching gears just a little bit we're going with the Nissan Fairlady Z this one is the Gretti Deco check it out number 94 chrome lace wheels definitely no tampos but still a beautiful car and just gorgeous of course if you have the white you must find the red there is a red one I don't know how many other colors of the Gretti there are I think the red one is my favorite. I wish it just had the lace wheels from the white and it would just really finish this off. I love this one, man. It is just super clean, super clean. I think this is more of an iconic car than the Skyline, mainly because it's the Nissan Fairlady, man. This thing is just really, really clean looking. Now going back to another one, this is another Fairlady Z. This was out of the chasing or missing logo version from Hot Wheels. Can't remember what the series was really called. It was the card art where they were looking for the missing logo. So there was a missing logo and then there was one that had the logo on it. So never found the missing logo version of it. It's very, very hard to find. But then you had this one, super clean police deco or police livery. But the next one is the Fuguzi. I think that's how you say it. Beautiful, check that out. Super clean white. Tampos are done beautifully, just like the orange one we saw earlier. Um, yeah, this thing is gorgeous. Just well done. And then of course, jumping right back on track with another Fairlady Z is the Advan. There we go, number 74, Kaido House. Definitely a beauty. I don't remember where I found this one, but man, that is nice. And then just like the custom of the 240, you have another one. Here we go. Almost the exact same livery. Let us see. Almost the exact same. So very, very close but not. So Fair Lady Z versus 240. Same exact livery, or I want to say same exact. It's very close. Do you guys let me know which one you think is better, the custom 240 or the standard 240? Either way, these things are sweet. So moving on is another Fair Lady Z. This one is the Nismo version in this blue. Check that out. Thing is gorgeous. Chrome five spokes, no tampos, but very clean, very elegant, and still looks good. Either way, this car is super sweet. But of course, with the blue Nismo, you have to have a yellow one. So here's the yellow version of the Nismo. Black five spokes, this one does it perfectly matching and tying in all of the T 
campos and livery for it, just black and yellow. That's all they had to do and they did it. And I think it came out great. Now we're gonna be switching gears yet again, but we're staying with the Fair Lady. This is the Fair Lady 2000 with the 1552 livery. Same blue as the Nismo, just a little bit lighter, just like a shade lighter. And there we go, that thing is awesome. It looks like a super fun car. And of course, 1552 had a couple variations. Um, there's a red edition that I still haven't been able to get, but I'm sure I will find it on eBay or trade for it or something. But with the blue 52, you have the black and red 1552. Red interior, very menacing. And of course, I'm always gonna say black and red is menacing because it is, it's an awesome color setup. Color choice is great. And then you have another 1552 in pearl white. This one has the blue arrow discs. So again, 1552 looks really good on this casting. Um, they just kept it simple. They didn't try to go with some undersized wheels like they did on the 2000 GTR Liberty Walk. But I think this one fits it. Then of course they came out in the blue and pink as well. Got the Datsun 54 on the side. So there's that one. Then for the Fair Lady 2000, you also have the red number two. This was my favorite one for the longest time. It just looks so good with that color and white stripes and the white ring on those steelies look amazing. Definitely a huge fan of this one. Um, I have to say out of the 2000 Fair Ladies, this one is my favorite one. Um, and a close second is this one right here. You have the recolor number two, the pearlescent yellow. Very clean, very, very clean. Now the next one is a classic color. It's like an off, off yellow or pale yellow with maroon. This is also another beautiful car. Fair Lady 2000s don't get enough love. They need to come back out with some more. They just recently uh, released one in that seafoam green, which we'll showcase next. It is the last one in our Nissan Jammer. And then after that, there are a lot more imports, but we gotta switch it up to premiums in the next episode. So if you wanna see premiums, comment down below. But they're not gonna be in any category. They're just gonna be random premiums we're gonna showcase. But the last one for the Fair Ladies is this one. Seafoam green, black stripe, steelies, blank white meatball, just like the cream colored one we just saw. Just beautiful. If only they put some tail lights on there, I think this casting would look magnificent. You have the side exhaust, which I've never really noticed until not that long ago. Um, it's just an awesome casting. This should be the next super. If you're gonna do JDM, change it up a little bit, get away from some Skylines, get away from the, the 300ZXs, and do this casting. This casting is awesome. So great way to finish this one, of course, with the Seafoam Green Fair Lady Z. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode, guys. Like I said, there are so many more jammers to go through, hundreds of hundreds of cars to go through, and hopefully you guys stick around long enough to comment down below what you think and which one was your favorite out of this lineup. And if you guys enjoyed it, give it a huge thumbs up. And until next time, this is the Mustang Hunter. Peace.